Hello, I'm Mort Kern. We're at the University of California, Irvine, Cardiac Catheterization Laboratory. And I'm going to talk to you today briefly about fractional flow reserve, both the basics, practical aspects, and pitfalls, and then why we should use FFR for detection of ischemia and what our goals should be in the treatment of our PCI patients. Let's start with the basics, practice, and pitfalls. So we know that uh, to measure FFR, we have to insert the pressure wire across the stenosis. There are five steps prior to getting to that point, which we will talk about briefly. We have to first connect the equipment correctly on the table. Second, zero to atmosphere, both the guide catheter and the guide wire. Third, advance the guide wire into the guide. And at that point, match pressures, not zero, but match pressures between guide and guide wire. Fourth step is to cross the stenosis. Fifth step is to give the adenosine and measure FFR. One extra step at the end would be to pull back and make sure we haven't had signal drift. And we'll talk about that at the end of this talk. So here's a cartoon of the pressure wire beyond the stenosis. Here's a display of the aortic pressure in red and the coronary pressure in green. At, at maximal hyperemia, in this case at the initiation of the uh, hyperemic period, we can acquire our ratio of distal pressure to aortic pressure and produce our FFR number. We know that this number is a, an in-lab, artery-specific measurement of the ischemic potential, which is equal to what we would get if we did a stress test on this one artery. Now, to get an accurate FFR, we have to be aware of some of the pitfalls and problems that we're going to find out. So we have some technical aspects which we should attend to, some anatomic considerations, some mechanical and pharmacologic considerations, and hemodynamic artifacts. And I'll show you examples of all of these in the next few minutes. Make sure that your connections are tight, there's no loose connections anywhere, there are no bubbles, and of course we have to zero the guide and guide wire pressure properly. We may encounter difficulty with any guide wires in tortuous arteries, specific approaches to serial lesions, and sometimes we will not be able to get a guide wire everywhere we want to go. With regard to mechanical problems, make sure our guide catheter is not obstructed. We don't use side holes in guide catheters. We will uh, make sure that we get adequate hyperemia, a subject of uh, very great importance. And finally, for hemodynamic artifacts, we want to be cognizant of whenever we have a damped pressure waveform. This might be due to the guide catheter or contrast media in a small guide catheter. And we'll uh, identify the ability to detect signal drift. And of course, I think side holes are unnecessary. If we have an ostium that is already damped, we will not be using a seated guide to make measurements.